Hello, this is Tim McLaughlin with a couple of minutes of Erie History. Uh, today I'd like to talk about when Abraham Lincoln visited Erie twice. Now, you may recall me talking about George Washington visiting Erie County, Waterford to be exact, uh, but this is about Abraham Lincoln who visited 108 years later. Lincoln, the rail splitter from Illinois, was now the president-elect and he was going to take a railroad journey from Springfield, Illinois to Washington, D.C. Now this route would take him through Cleveland, Erie, Buffalo. He made 93 stops, 2,000 miles in 12 days. Lincoln stopped at uh, three communities in Erie County, PA. The train stopped at uh, Girard, Erie, and then Northeast. Uh, it stopped in Girard to pick up a special passenger. Uh, this was Horace Greeley. Greeley was the owner and editor of the New York Tribune, and he selected the small town of Girard because what he would do is he would interview Lincoln, and then he would get off at Erie, and then he would telegraph the interview to his newspaper in New York City. Well, Lincoln finally arrived in Erie. It's on February 16, 1861. And it's about 12.20 in the afternoon, and uh, they all stop in Erie to get lunch, and he'll have a little bit to eat and talk to the crowds. Uh, this is at the old Union Depot on Peach Street, which is real close there to Griswold Plaza and uh, Union Station. It was decorated with flags. An arch was built over the railroad tracks and were evergreens everywhere, wrapped around pillars. There was a band there playing lively marches. And there was even a booming of a cannon. He didn't say too much when he was here. He was hoarse and fatigued. He excused himself from speaking at any length or expressing any opinions. Uh, Lincoln then departs Erie and makes a brief stop in Northeast. And from there, he crosses into New York State and he stops at Westfield, New York. You might recall the story about the little girl who had earlier written to President Lincoln and suggested he grow whiskers to appear more presidential. And the story goes, when he's in Westfield, he asks if the little girl's in the audience, and she is, and uh, they bring her up, and he gives her a couple of kisses and cheers from the spectators. Uh, but sadly, four years later, uh, Lincoln would come to Erie again, uh, but this time it would be in his funeral train. In Erie, the mayor boarded the train, along with one of the founders of the Erie Forge Company, uh, which, by the way, was father of Colonel Strong Vincent, and Lieutenant Commander Rowe, uh, he was from the USS Michigan. An interesting note is that an embalmer rode the train and made improvements along the way with uh, on Lincoln's appearance uh, along the long journey. Now, the train arrived in Erie. It was uh, April 28, 1865, and it arrived at about 3 a.m. Uh, church bells rang, and uh, some minute guns were fired. Uh, quite a different scene than the first time that Lincoln came to Erie. Uh, the nine-car funeral train never went faster than 20 miles an hour along the entire journey. I also find it odd that the remains of Lincoln's youngest son, uh, who died three years earlier, they were also placed on this funeral train. Several days later, uh, the funeral train makes its way to Springfield, Illinois, where Lincoln is finally put to rest. And that, my friends, is just a couple of minutes of Eerie History by Tim McLaughlin, The History Man.